tax objective 10 problems. Problem 1. A cab charges $4.50 for the first mile and $1.35 for every additional mile. The faster route to the train station is 22 miles. The slower route is 14 miles. What is the difference in the per mile rate of cab fares to the train station round to the nearest cent? For a problem like this, I like to step back a little and think. Of the miles driven by the cab, the first mile will be the most expensive at $4.50 but every mile after that the cost will be $1.35 per mile and that means that the average cost per mile will be more for the shorter trip of 14 miles which happens to be the slower route so that eliminates answers A and D since the faster routes will be less per mile so we cross them off. At this point it's just a matter of calculation to figure out how much more per mile the slower route will be for the faster route, the total cost is $4.50 for the first mile plus 21 times $1.35 for the remaining miles. Press enter. The total cost is $32.85. To get the average cost per mile, divide the number of miles 22. Press enter. The average cost is just over $1.49 per mile. And to compute the slower route, we take 4.5 for the first mile plus 13 times 1.35 for the remaining miles. Press enter. The total cost of the slower route is $22.05. To get the average cost per mile, we divide by 14. Press enter. We get $1.57.5 per mile. It looks to be about 8 cents per mile more. But to be sure, we subtract the lower cost per mile, 1.493. Press enter, we get a little over 8 cents per mile, and this is where we find 8 cents per mile more, so we circle our correct answer B. Problem 2, if x and y are both positive, and if xy is less than x, and xy is less than y, then which statement must be true? This problem is sort of an SAT type of question, that if we were timed, we would consider a strategy to do it in our head. To test answer A, we'll have x be a number between 0 and 1, let's say 0.5, and y be a number greater than 1, let's say 1.5. And then multiply these numbers together, press enter. This number, 0.75, is not less than x, but is greater than x. So this eliminates answer A, so we cross it off. For answer B, where both x and y are greater than 1, we'll let both x and y be 1.5, so we multiply 1.5 by 1.5, press enter, we get 2.25, and this number is greater than both x and y, so we cross off answer b as well. Next, we'll go straight down to answer d, because answer c is similar to answer a, only the x and y are switched. So for answer d, we'll let x be 0.5 and y be 0.5, and here is 0.5, times 0.5 entered in the calculator, press enter. We get 0.5, which is smaller than both x and y. So that means that d is the correct answer, so we circle answer d. All that we did using the calculator here, we could have done in our head a lot faster if we needed to. Problem three, one of the displays at a botanical garden consists of a three foot wide patch of ground cover surrounding a rectangular bed of tulips. The tulip bed measures 25 feet by 38 feet. How many feet of flexible edging does the gardener need for the outside perimeter of the ground cover? For this problem, I definitely recommend going to the draw a picture strategy. Can you do it without a picture? Of course. But if you don't take the time and care to draw a picture on problems where you can, you are not taking the test seriously and are in danger of failing. The tulip bed measures 25 by 38 feet. I recommend at this point taking a quick look at the answers. I hope it's obvious that 75 feet is definitely too short so we can immediately improve our chances by eliminating answer D. For these problems involving geometry, drawing a picture will almost always help us to eliminate at least one answer, improving our odds of getting the correct answer. And then we add the three foot wide patch of ground cover around the outside of the rectangular bed of tulips. So this three foot border will add six feet to each dimension. So we will have 38 plus six or 44 feet as the length and the width including the path will be 25 plus six feet or 31 feet. We can now correctly draw the dimensions on all four sides. 
then we can either go to our perimeter formula in the formula chart or add all four sides together and that equals 150 feet and this is where we find 150 feet so we circle our correct answer A. Problem 4. A portable DVD player is on sale for 20% off the original price. A 7% sales tax is added to the sale price to give a total cost of $191.74. Which equation represents this situation and could be used to find the original price P of the DVD player? For this problem, we won't have to calculate anything so it's really just about being able to translate English into algebra. First we have the variable, or really an unknown, P for the price of the DVD player. And next we see that the sale price is 20% off the original price, which is P, and that's underlined in blue. So the sale price would be P minus 20% of P, or P minus 0.2P. But after that, we have the sales tax of 7%, which is 0.07 times the sale price, which is again P minus 0.2P. And where do we find these two expressions for the sale price and the sales tax? We find them in both answers A and B. One of the answers is plus the sales tax, and one is minus the sales tax. And here is the text. In the text of the problem, we find the added sales tax added as in plus the sales tax and that is found in answer A we circle our correct answer A one way we could have also done this problem is to solve for P and our common sense should tell us that after a discount of 20 percent and adding the sales tax of 7 percent being a little less than two hundred dollars the original price should be a little over two hundred dollars we could either solve for P directly or plug in prices for P until we have a price just over $200 that makes sense. Here in the calculator the equation for answer A is entered in the Y equals view using X for the variable instead of P. If we go to the table view by pressing second then graph and scroll all the way down to 224 meaning an original price of $224 we see that our sales price including sales tax will be $191.74 and this confirms that A is a reasonable answer. Problem 5. In the functions below, find the relationship between x and y. Look for a pattern. Which of the following could be the next function in the pattern? When I look at most math and algebra problems, they have a familiar look to them where I immediately know where to go with it to work toward a solution. Not so with this problem. We need to find the next function in the pattern. I see some three x's, but other than that, I have a tough time seeing a pattern. I plan to start out finding the relationship between x and y. For the first function, function 1, we'll set about solving for y, and that's for the equation 3x minus y equals 7. To solve for y or get y by itself, we'll first subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. 3x minus 3x cancel on the left side. We bring down what's left, negative y equals 7 minus 3x. To solve for y, we can multiply or divide by negative 1 and all that does is switch the sign so we have y equals negative 7 plus 3x and changing that into slope intercept form y equals mx plus b that's y equals 3x minus 7 so we'll place that equation next to function number 1 next we'll look at function number 2 3 times quantity x minus 2 equals y minus 1 the first thing we'll do is use the symmetric property of equality and switch sides so we have y minus 1 equals 3 times quantity x minus 2. Next we'll use the distributive property of algebra and distribute or multiply the 3 outside the parentheses to the x and the negative 2 inside the parentheses and that gives us y minus 1 equals 3x minus 6. Add 1 to both sides of the equation negative 1 plus 1 cancel on the left side we bring down what's left and that's y equals 3x minus 5 and we place this equation also in slope intercept form y equals mx plus b next to function number two and finally we take the third function to solve for y and it's one third y equals x minus one we can solve for y by multiplying multiplying the equation by three when we multiply the three over three cancel and we have three times x and three times negative one so what we have left is y equals three x minus three 
and we'll place this equation next to the original function number 3. Now to look for a pattern we go from y intercept of negative 7 to a y intercept of negative 5 to a y intercept of negative 3 and following the pattern the next function should be y equals 3x minus 1 so we circle our correct answer D. Problem 6. Callie travels 4 kilometers east, 6 kilometers north, and then 13 more kilometers east. How far is she from the starting point? Round your answer to the nearest tenth of a kilometer. This problem, like many of ours, can be started by making a drawing. We'll start here with Callie. From this starting point, we'll go 4 kilometers to the east, and then she goes 6 kilometers to the north, and finally 13 more kilometers to the east to her final destination. Just based on this drawing we can eliminate these first two answers A and B since they are not long enough. The distance has to be greater than 17 kilometers. This distance ends up being the hypotenuse of a triangle with legs of 6 kilometers and of 17 kilometers. The distance between the points can be found using the Pythagorean theorem. Using the Pythagorean theorem we'll let A squared be 6 squared and we'll let B squared be 17 squared. And here they are entered in the calculator. Adding them together we get 325. To get the hypotenuse we take the square root of 325, press enter, we get 18.03 rounded to the nearest hundredth, and here is the closest answer to 18.03 which is 18.0 kilometers. So we circle our correct answer C. Problem 7. Leslie needs to find the equation of a line parallel to line segment KL that passes through negative 1 comma 4. What is the equation of the line? We need to look at two things here. First, there is the slope of the line between the points. The rise is 5 and the run is 2, so this will be a slope of 5 over 2 or 2.5. So we know that the parallel line will have this slope also. And we also know that the line will go through this point, negative 1 comma 4. So in order to graph, we'll take this equation for answer A, 5x minus 2y equals a negative 13. We subtract 5x from both sides of the equation. 5x minus 5x cancel each other on the left side. We bring down what's left, and that's negative 2y equals a negative 13 minus 5x. Now we can solve for y by dividing by the coefficient of y, negative 2. Negative 2 over negative 2 cancel on the left side of the equation. We bring down what's left, and that's y equals 6.5 plus 2.5x. So the slope of the line is correct, and we can also test negative 1 comma 4 by substituting negative 1 for x, and that equals 4, which proves our solution. So we circle our correct answer, A. Alternatively, we can check it out in our graphing calculator as well. Go to Stat Edit and enter the point with the negative 1 under L1 and the 4 under L2. Then we go to the Y equals view and make sure that our plot 1 is activated. Then we enter the equation, solving for Y as we go. First open a parentheses, then enter the constant on the right side of the equation, negative 13. Next subtract 5X, then close the parentheses, and finally divide by the coefficient of Y, negative 2. Press graph. The graph of the line goes through the point negative 1 comma 4 and looks like it has the same slope as line segment KL, confirming our answer choice A. Problem 8. The length of a rectangular yard is 3 yards more than twice the width. The perimeter is 72 yards. What is the width of the yard? This problem can be set up and solved as a system of equations, but given that there are multiple choice options, We'll use what I think is a very easy method, and that's trying out all these widths of rectangles. And seeing which of these widths gives us a rectangle with a perimeter of 72 yards. As we've done earlier, let's start out with a drawing of a rectangle. We'll start out with answer A, a width of 11 yards. If the width is 11 yards, the length is 3 yards more than twice that width, or 2 times 11 plus 3 which equals 22 plus 3, which equals 25 yards. And for the perimeter, we have the formula P equals 2L plus 2W. And applying the formula to this rectangle, that gives us 2 times 25 plus 2 times 11. And that simplifies to 50 plus 22, 
which finally simplifies to 72 yards. We see that 72 yards is the perimeter we need, so we circle our correct answer A. Be sure, however, to double and triple check to see that you did not make a mistake, and also try all the other answers. Was it really perimeter, or maybe it was area? Be careful. Problem 9. A sketch of a rose garden for a town's garden walk is shown in the diagram below. Each unit on the grid represents 2 meters. What is the area of the rose garden? This is quite a straightforward problem. To do this, we need to know how to find the area of a triangle, and that would be to take the formula A equals 1 half base times height. The next thing we need to do is to read very carefully. Each unit on the grid represents 2 meters. And that means that this base is 6 units in length. That will equal 12 meters. And it means also that this height of the triangle of 4 units really equals 8 meters. So that gives us an area of 1 half of 12 times 8, which equals 1 half of 96, which equals 48 square meters. And this is where we find 48 square meters, so we circle our correct answer C. But before we move on to the next problem, I would like to demonstrate how easy it is on this problem to make a mistake and get it wrong. Let's say that we take base times height, which equals 96, and forget to multiply by 1 half or divide by 2. That will give us answer D. Or let's say that we multiply the number of units 4 by 6 instead of the meters. From there we could have had either A or B as answers for making the first mistake. Be careful, be vigilant, and get it right. Problem 10. A series of squares and their areas is shown below. What is the side length of the next square in the pattern? The first thing to look at is the pattern from one square to the next. The first one has an area of 0.000144 square meters. The second square is 0.0144 square meters in area. And the third square is 1.44 square meters in area. The progression is that we get from the first to the second square by multiplying the area by 100 and we get from the second to the third square by again multiplying the area by 100. So following the same pattern we can get to the fourth or next area by taking the area of the third square 1.44 square meters and multiplying it by 100 for a total of 144 square meters. In order to find the length of one side what do we need to do? We take the square root of 144 and what is the square root of 144? It is 12, 12 meters. And this is where we find 12 meters, so we circle our correct answer, B. This has been Tax Objective 10 Problems. Thanks for viewing.